the first thing that comes to my mind is lost generation. Uh, I mean, there are so many young people that uh, will enter the job, uh, the labor market, or that are unemployed. If we don't address this challenge, we'll just have this generation of young people who will not know what you know to do with their their future. Um, but also by 2030, I read in a in a DevEx article that. Under the under 18 years of old, uh, I expect it to make up 60% of the urban population. So this is huge. And when we know that actually one of the consequences of this youth, I mean, the unemployment uh, problem is that there's a huge migration from rural to urban. So, I mean, the urban, uh, how do you say, the urban setting will soon be saturated. Uh, and we have also an increase of urban poor people who will live in slums. I mean, so we're just moving the problem from the rural to the urban uh, area. So this is something that really we'll need to, to address uh, if you want to avoid a, an even uh, greater problem on, on the long term. But I think there's also a real risk of social unrest. Um, PLAN has those programs in, on youth economic employment in El Salvador, for instance. And they realized that the work they were doing with those young people uh, to access the job markets prevented uh, violence and gangs, you know, sort of forming themselves in urban pockets, in urban settings, because they don't have anything else to do. So we also realized that ensuring a future for those young generations has indirect impact on a lot of other settings, like even um, extremism, I mean, young people entering gangs and violence. So I think it does have a lot of indirect positive consequences if we start tackling the youth employment uh, business. I was in Indonesia recently, precisely to visit our youth economic empowerment programs. And what we realized is that you might have good school programs but there's a mismatch between the skills demands and the, the, the skills that those young people leave the school with. So even though you have highly theoretically qualified young people you know, uh, entering the labor market, actually when you talk to the companies, these are not the skills they need. So I think this is one of the major problem is there needs to be a better, we need to listen better to those companies and what they need, what are the possibilities on the market at the, at the moment in time to make sure that the trainings that those young people receive is adapted to what they will find or people will be looking for on, on the job market. So I think that that's one, but I think we also need to go beyond the literacy uh, skills and uh, the writing and reading skills in schools, which is good. But it doesn't, you need to also support children to also develop their own personality uh, to have trainings to really empower them on, on, on different type of skills because this is what we've seen as well when I, I was in Indonesia. You have those young women who are brilliant women but they haven't been trained, they haven't been empowered to think for themselves, to speak out loud and they end up you know, remaining sort of uh, in the shadows uh, because they don't dare speaking out. So I think this is something that, um, that is really important. And also we need to address other factors that are not linked directly to education, but for instance, a lot of girls drop out of school because they get into early marriage, because of violence, uh, because they need to stay at home uh, to, to help their mother or the families, brothers and sisters. So I think this is also uh, a consequence. So we need to also tackle those, uh, those problems which prevent children from finishing graduating from school and then entering into the labor market. Well, it's a tricky question. I mean, let's face it, currently there are only 50 women working for 77% of men. So there is this gender gap, there is this gender inequality, which is based, you know, linked to gender stereotypes, to long lasting, I mean, uh, not, not the history, but practices that we are also facing in Europe. Uh, we're facing this everywhere. So um, I think we need to, ensure first again starting back not only in the labor market but back in school we need to make sure education is gender sensitive uh, that teachers uh, promote gender equality and also that we encourage uh, young women 
and adolescent girls to move into non-traditional sectors. You know, there's this tendency to say, you're a girl, you'll be a hairdresser. Uh, you're a boy, then you'll work in the manufacturing or you know, in the car industry. So I think this is also one thing that we need to sort of push women to enter a different type of labor market, to develop different skills. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's proven that investing in girls and women uh, has a clear impact on poverty reduction, but also on economic prosperity, because women are more likely to reinvest their income into their family and into making sure that you know this evolves into a more sustainable, so to say, uh, um, better conditions for their whole family. So that's why I think it's really important to invest in 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 girls and women's economic empowerment or you know girls' education. The return on investments uh, is really huge not only for the family, but also for the whole country.